What's up today, people? I have got something I want to show you guys that I found very interesting and educational. Uh, first of all, this is a really good buy. $177 for a very nice component set. And it's on the STAG website. MLG65C. Six and a half inch component set. But I want to show you some interesting things about what we're given here in information. And I wish more companies would present all this information. So I'm going to start out by looking at these crossovers. Now, from what I can tell on the crossovers, without being able to see the circuit board on the back, just based on the components, I can see that there is a two-position switch. Okay? That would be the tweeter intonation switch. I can see that there's a resistor, a coil, and a capacitor. I can also see that there's uh, an input and an output. So you got you got uh, inputs and you got two outputs for a tweeter and woofer. Now, from this basic layout, what this usually means, the resistor is how you select, uh, you know, zero or three ohm, a three dB decrease. So the resistor, turning that resistor on and off, uh, will allow you to attenuate the tweeter to a slightly lower power output. And the the combination of this capacitor and this coil. Uh, um, most likely means that you've got a 12 dB roll-off, uh, frequency roll-off at the cutoff point on these tweeters. And this is only a tweeter uh, crossover, so the woofers will be getting a straight signal straight through. Um, that's the nuts and bolts of that. Having said that, there's a possibility that this, that this coil could be being used to roll the, the highs off the woofer, but most likely it's not. Uh, so we'll move on past that now. Look at the build quality on this. It looks really nice. And uh, it's a nice rigid looking cone. Nice rubber surround. Um, overall, a really clean set. This is like an aluminum bodied. Uh, nice little honeycomb screen. With a nice dome tweeter. Probably edge driven. Which is always good. And it's like a pretty big voice coil on those tweeters. So you're going to get good linear edge driven movement. I'd say that's pretty good, a pretty good setup. Nice low playing woofers. But this is just a visual part. So there's a lot you can tell by just looking at a picture uh, once you know what you're looking for. I'd say the money is spent in the right places. The design of the drivers, the moving parts of the drivers, looks like quality. Of course, you get blade terminals that didn't waste any money putting the spring loaded uh, terminals here. Uh, they didn't waste any money with, you know, making the basket real pretty or making the magnet structure look real pretty. Anything special. But they put the money into the moving parts, which is where your sound is going to come from. And also making the tweeters look nice because they're going to be exposed. Now, we have got these, you know, crossovers. You don't necessarily have to use them, but we have got them. Let's start out down here. I'm going to show you a few things that I noticed off the bat. Now, this is the woofers. Uh specs and on the whoopers you see it's a QTS of 0.72 which is slightly above 707.707 .707, meaning this whooper is designed to play in an infinite baffle which is what a door is if you put these whoopers in a door or the back dash of a vehicle or any place where there's no real control in the cabinet uh, you just got a baffle that that goes across there and seals off the front of the whooper from the back they're going to perform well. This type of woofer would work well in your door where a six and a half inch woofer made for an enclosure would not work well in your door. Okay, there's a few other numbers here I want to show you too. Help you understand exactly what we're looking at across the board. The frequency response is from 65 hertz to 6500 hertz. Okay, that 65 hertz is important. Keep that in mind. You notice down here it shows the FS is 65 hertz. And the FS is the lowest point before the speaker goes crazy. So you'd want to probably cross these over at around 80, 80 hertz uh, up to, you know, whatever. 80 hertz is the number, though. I would go a little higher than this. Because at this point, the driver is going to want to move the most. It's also going to have the highest impedance because the driver moving a lot is going to increase its, uh, its resistance. And it says it has a 3 ohm resistance, or DC impedance. So whenever it gets to that 65 hertz, that's going to be a lot higher number. 
and also the driver is going to be going really crazy. So these are important numbers and it's good information. And I'll show you some more keys to these. We're going to come back to these numbers again. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So moving on down, look at the tweeter. The tweeter has a 3.6 ohm impedance, 20 watt rating. Its frequency response is 1300 hertz, which is really low, okay, to 22,000 hertz. I would not play this tweeter this low um, because that is also its FS. I'll show you that as well. And the FS is where that driver is moving like crazy. We don't want that tweeter moving like crazy. I would probably set this tweeter up at like 3000 hertz as a starting point. And we can see that our woofer can play much higher than 3000 hertz. That's pretty high actually. So this combination would work well together. But keep in mind that 1300 hertz right there. Now we'll move on down to the chart. And down here on the woofer, you'll see this red line is the impedance. This is this is the, how much resistance this driver has. Down here it starts out, you know, at its normal load, but as uh, the frequency goes up, that driver starts to move right when it gets to this point right here, it's moving as much as it's ever going to move, which is the FS. And that, if you look at this line right here, every one of these lines past 50 is 10. And where it's peaking is between 60 and 70. It's right in the middle there, see? That's where the impedance is the highest. That's where the whooper is moving the most. And uh, if you go down here a little ways further, you can see that the whooper's FS is 63.49. Now, remember what I said about the whooper's uh what was FS? The rated FS. That was the tested FS. <coughs> its rated FS is 65 hertz, which is slightly above what it tested at. So this is not a bad number. It's just a little bit lower, a little bit closer to that that peak than I would like it. I won't. I don't want the woofer playing right here. I want it playing up in here somewhere. All right. So if you look at 90 hertz and 80 hertz running up 80 hertz is down here we're not looking at a terribly big rise there that's a really good sweet spot to, to, to uh, cross it over at and this this little test chart shows you that all right that's important so now we've seen the whooper we can also look at a couple other things uh, it's, it's hertz and it's ohms this is the actual ohms it measured at 2.5 uh, bass sensitivity 93.2 dB we we'll go down to the tweeter now the tweeter its FS read 12.51 Hertz which is right here this is where the tweeter was dancing like a nut okay so what we don't want is our tweeter playing here we want it playing up here somewhere so when I said uh, 3k it looks like 2k would be good too 2k or 3k Anywhere, anywhere, you know, from here up will be good. And this area right here is around 1,500 hertz. And that's not a bad spot. It could play that low. And if you look at what they recommended in the tweeter, they rate it from 1,300 hertz to 22,000 hertz. So that lines up with my data and with the data they're providing here. Excellent data. Excellent. Uh, of course, like I said, I would probably run it a little higher just to keep that tweeter safe. But the point is, anything from just past this hump and up is going to be good. And on the whooper, anything from just past this hump and up is going to be good. So you got to make sure that your subwoofer you're pairing this with can play up to this range, up past this hump. And then you set your crossover points up to where one falls off and one, and, and one picks up past this hump and you'll have a nice smooth response mostly the sub gets a little nasty bump there for some reason that could have been part of the room they were measuring in too but you'll notice the tweeter doesn't have that <coughs> still this is an excellent an excellent way to sell speakers and I would call this an excellent an excellent setup for someone to put in a vehicle if you guys are interested in a really cool little set for $177 with excellent specs 
the money spent where it needs to be spent and not blown on crazy stuff, the still set from Stag might be just perfect. The price is nice and low, and the quality looks really good. Um, yeah, I can't really find anything bad about it. They don't talk about comb material in here. I looked through this earlier, and I couldn't find anything. Um maybe I missed it let's see yeah it is a glass fiber I was going to say it looks like glass fiber reinforced or, or uh, something to that effect so yes that's solid mid-range budget SQ refill uh, glass fiber reinforced polycarbonate mid base so it's glass fiber reinforced and polycarbonate basket glass fiber composite mid base cones and tetron soft dome tweeters with solid aluminum housing a tetron is a plastic so it's not a super it's like a plastic um, if I remember correctly it's like a, a poly uh, propylene uh, a variant of that but it's a higher level variant it's very hard and and, uh, and rigid so this should make an excellent combination and especially at a budget price uh, I would uh, I would definitely uh, recommend this setup for someone is wanting to save some money and have some good, solid, healthy mid base. I like it. Anyway, guys, if you found this helpful, be sure and hit that subscribe button and comment on what you think. Did I call it right on these or did I call it wrong? And you know what I mean. If you know, then you know. <laughs> Peace, guys.